whatever ghosts or uh, <laughs> demons are haunting our recording today, be gone. Hello, and welcome back to Crimes from the East. Today, we have a very special episode because we have the Tarka Trio. We have Alex, Katie, and we have myself, Pia. So, hello and welcome, ladies. How do you spell that? Okay, Tarka is T-A-D-K-A. Tarka. So where's the R sound come from? Tarka. 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 Yeah. So, but it's spelled Tadka. It's the D. Sometimes the D has a nice little er thinging happening. Tarka trio. Got it. I'm in. Before we get started, can I just can I just real quick point out? I don't know if we've pointed this out in other episodes. How difficult it is to get this Tarka trio together because yes. It's right now when we're recording. It is 10:40 in the morning for me. Pio, what time is it for you? 12:40 in the afternoon. It's almost 7 p.m. for me. <laughs> we are just on very different times. Especially since daylight savings time happened. And I think they don't celebrate that in France, do they? Or celebrate it. They don't observe it. Yeah. <laughs> we celebrate it. You know, there's cheese and wine involved as usual. <laughs> but yeah, like they don't observe it in France, right? They do. We do. Oh, they do. We don't yeah. observe it in Arizona. Arizona, yeah, so like I know. all of my meetings and everything has been thrown off this But whole you're week. lucky. So I literally, at like 9.30 this morning, I was like, I'm ready. And then I was like, wait. <laughs> no one else is. No. Yeah, I was like, oh, wait, it's at 10. Th- I'm going to play some video games. <laughs> nice. So what did you play? What did you play? I'm currently playing Borderlands, like through the Borderlands series. Oh. So right now I'm on the pre-sequel. I did the first one and the second one. And I got to tell you. It's a game where by the end, you're like, so we're the baddies? Oh. Like, Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. You're really like, we are not the good guys in this. Like, we are the bad guys. So. <laughs> well, I'm currently playing the complete opposite of that sentiment. I'm playing Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so That's- freaking cute and furry. So. Have you played, if you really like Animal Crossing and the really cute, like, nice stuff, have you played, um... Oh, no, I don't really like the cute stuff. Well, Cozy Grove, they play, like, really calm music the whole time. You're, like, a Girl Scout saving ghosts. So, like, you're in a town full of ghosts, and you're just, like, trying to bring the bears back to life. I like it. When I'm done killing things in Borderlands, I'm like, all right, let me be a Girl Scout for a little (laughs) bit and help ghosts. So... Alex, tell us what's going on in your uh, haunted mansion in France. I went to a cemetery. I saw uh, mm. Claude Monet's grave. Ooh. Did you feel anything around it? Like any aura? It's pretty spooky. And they have these things. What are they called? Dolmens? They're sort of like, actually, they're even older than the Stonehenge thingies. But it's the same concept of like prehistoric man-made stone structures structures um but like at this point most of them just look like rocks in the ground but they're dolmen mm. so like gaul the gauls made it yes exactly asterix and nobody exactly yeah some celtic shit we always forget those cultures when we think about like ancient the ancient world and mm-hmm. all kinds of mysterious stuff right like generally you think of egypt and like Mesopotamia and right. like Northern Africa. Nobody talks about the Gauls. <laughs> Hello, the Vikings. They've been around forever and they've been all over the world. In fact, they found apparent evidence that Vikings actually came to Northern America before Columbus did. Oh, yeah. Oh, they went all over the place. I was actually just about to mention that my new landlord... Mm-hmm. Out of the blue, randomly turns to me, he's like, you know, they found evidence that the Vikings were in the U.S. first. And I was like, first compared to who? And also, why are you (laughs) telling me this? Do I look Viking? Like, I don't know. Or do you look Native Native? American? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I was like, okay, cool. Can we like finish renting me this house and so I can give you my money, please? I mean, for the record, isn't it true that? Columbus never technically was in North America. He was that in like too. the islands. Yeah, like he never actually came to Northern America. He got to like Guatemala. No, where did he go? The uh, Caribbean islands. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, see, Columbus was a piece of shit. Uh, yeah. Not that the Vikings were like saints or Right, anything. but they still They're- didn't do as much damage probably as he did. 
Well, you know what? Maybe they did. Maybe they did. <laughs> Let's just say everyone sucks. Everyone sucks. And moral is don't be dicks. <laughs> like, Stop colonizing. Technology is evil. Oh, I won't go that far. Sports. <laughs> We've been talking about like Vikings, Gauls, Columbus, North America, and today's case is so far from that. Obviously, this is crimes from the East. So we're talking about South Asia here. And today's case takes place on foreign soil in the sense not India. It isn't a case from India today. So Ooh. it involves our very Desi brethren from Sri Lanka. Nice. Have either of you been? I've been. No, but I had a pen pal from Sri Lanka in uh, middle school and high school. We used to like write each other all the time. How sweet. Well, my parents took my sister to Sri Lanka a decade and some years ago. I didn't have my passport ready, so they just left without me. <laughs> Bye, see ya. We're leaving. I respect it. You need to get your passport in order. It was expired. I had to renew it. That wasn't enough time. So they had a grand old time in Sri Lanka and they loved it. It was so beautiful. Alex, when did you go to Sri Lanka? Oh, um, I was 15 years old. So that would have been almost 15 years ago. Mm. Got my first tattoo. When you were 15 in Sri Lanka? Oh my sneaky, God. Sneaky, sneaky style. <laughs> Was it like a dot on the thumb, like Phoebe? That's the earth. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a very embarrassing 2000-style tribal tramp stamp situation that has since been somewhat rectified. Okay. But um, yeah, I, it was the beginning of a rebellious phase, <laughs> to say the least. Very 2000s. I hope it was like a legit tattoo place and not some guy on the beach who's like, hey, I do tattoos, $5. I don't have any blood diseases, so I'm fine. You yeah. made it, Alex. Ooh, we're good. <laughs> so at least you've been there. And how was it? Tell us all about it. Oh, man. I ate just like the best food ever don't they use a lot of coconut in their cuisine yep right yep 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 and it's super spicy there's like a sri lankan shrimp curry and it's a dry curry okay it's more like a i don't know like a dry dish saute thingy yeah mm -hmm. oof oof you're crying of happiness <laughs> and pain i think i went to it was either like a tea garden or some like spice gardens yeah Cloves, the best cloves come from Sri Lanka. And of mm. course, tea as well, because Sri Lanka was called Ceylon back in the day. The mm -hmm. Brits, when the colonials made their way over there. And Ceylon tea, oh, as it is Ceylon known today tea. as well, comes from Sri Lanka. Yeah, it was cool. I liked it. It's a beautiful country. Well, way, way before you went there, Alex, or maybe it was around that time. So 2004. That's about when I was there. <laughs> oh, man. Pretty Do close. we need to consider you a suspect in whatever she's about to tell us? <laughs> Maybe she saw the people in today's case. We'll have to check back later. I actually got tattooed at the same parlor. It was well known for all the Sri Lankan criminals and me. And you. <laughs> so 2004 was a year of many turbulent storms all over the world. The most noteworthy of which was the Indian Ocean Tsunami in South Asia in December of ah, 2004. Yes, yes, yes. Our case takes place a couple months before that. And obviously, it's minuscule and not nearly as grave as that tragedy. It's a teeny tiny diplomatic storm that rocked the German town of oh. Wittischlingen, as well as the capital city of Colombo, Sri Lanka. Let's uh, bounce off into this story, shall we? Yeah. yeah. It is sports related. So game, set, match. Although that's from tennis and we're not talking about tennis, but <laughs> that's how much I know about sports. You could have been talking about golf. Yeah. Um, in 2004, the German Handball Federation was excited to be hosting for the very first time the Sri Lankan handball team. Now, these weren't competitive matches, but more of... A friendly match, an exchange of skills, and the beginnings of a mentorship between the two teams. The Germans are actually credited for officially forming the sport handball in 1917. 
It is an Olympic sport, so it's quite prestigious to be associated with a national team for the sport. Does everyone know what handball is? Because back in the day, I didn't. I didn't know what it was. But now I do, thanks to Germans. No, I had to look it up. Yeah, I literally just looked it up because I didn't want to like make a comment and then be like, oh, wait, I'm talking about racquetball. I literally could not think of a more German version of basketball. And that's literally what it is. Yeah, handball is a team sport in which two teams of seven players each pass a ball using their hands with the aim of throwing it into the goal of the other team. So it's like soccer, but with your hands instead of your feet. Got it. The goals look like the goals you see in soccer, but the court looks like a basketball court. You dribble the ball and pass it between your teammates before they score a goal. It's an interesting sport. Oh, man. I thought I had played handball before, but I think, no. We did the the not moving when you have the ball in your hand, but then we scored goals into a basketball basket thingy net. No, this one has a full goal like soccer. You probably paid some other derivative version yeah. of it, like handy ball or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so the Germans were hosting the Sri Lankan handball team in 2004. So when they came in, when they flew in, after a 10-hour flight, you'd expect the Sri Lankan team to be haggard and tired, but they were delighted at having landed and had a spring in their step like explorers at a new frontier. They were quickly put up at a hotel and were made comfortable by their German hosts. They had a dinner in their honor, and the teams got to meet each other. They sang and danced the night away. It was just sportsmanship spirit all around. There was awkward gesturing, and in broken words, the people from these two countries who speak completely different languages tried to communicate. It wasn't the words being said that was important, but more so the spirit in which it was being said. The Sri Lankan team was grateful, they were glad, and they were genial. They... They were just out of this world at being in Germany. The taste of joy and merriment hung in the air. So you can imagine, it was a ball. Over the next couple of days, the host took the team sightseeing all over town in Wittischlagen, where the Sri Lankans were even introduced to the mayor of the town, and they took tons of pictures. And then comes the day of their first friendly match. Right on time, the teams arrived, and after handshakes, the referee blew the whistle, and they kicked off the match, although there was no kicking involved, because it's handball. It was an absolute disaster. (laughs) The Sri Lankan team were playing terribly at a level close to amateur. They were beaten effortlessly by the Germans in a game that surprised few. After all, this was more about forging a long-term relationship between the two handball federations, right? It was expected of the visiting team to not be of the same caliber as the home team. But this was rather extreme, almost embarrassing to watch. Like at some point, the Germans should have like called it. Like they should have been like, okay, we're way too far ahead. Right. But a couple of players certainly had some skill and they were trying their best to save face. But it is not a one man sport. And the weakness of the team was left exposed for everyone to see. No worries. Another day, another match, right? That's how it goes. Their losses were meant to teach them valuable lessons and help improve the team's skills. After all, it is a friendly match. So it's not about winning and losing. It's more about learning. After the disastrous game, the team again had a wonderful night of food, music, and dancing. Because that's what you do when you lose, right? Yeah, you don't practice. You don't get together enough, try to form new strategies and improve your skills. Nope. You dance. (laughs) It's called team bonding. I'm with them. You know, they're celebrating that they got to play and that they're like, you know what? We'll, We'll be goldfish about it. Fine. I was an assistant coach for a little league soccer team. For girls between the ages, it was like third through fifth grade were the ages that I coached for. And uh, that was our strategy. We were like, that was a really great score. Like, did you see the way the girl came this way? Like, wasn't that really impressive? Like, we were all about the positivity and like what you can learn from it. So even after a loss, we were like, okay, but like, 
you know, team bonding and like we're going to do something fun together to like let it like soak over. And then at practice, at the next practice, we will regroup. But for now, let's celebrate that we had fun. Let's appreciate how well the other team did and what we can learn from that. So, well, 12 year old girls versus men in their 20s, possibly 30s. Different cases, I think. I mean, but maybe they were just ahead of the time. Maybe they were just like, you know what? Everyone's a winner. Don't let the result of a match ruin. Bring you down. Yeah, like ruin your whole day. Like you guys still like you still have to appreciate what you did well and what you can learn from it. Also, isn't this like their first time in Germany or like out of the first time they had ever left their country. Exactly. So they're like, yeah, whatever the sports. Uh -huh. oh, let's party down. <laughs> I mean, that checks for me. When I was living in Qatar, I did volleyball. I went to an international school and we would do tournaments in other countries, which was really cool. So I did wow. volleyball and uh, track and field tournaments outside of Qatar. And the volleyball one especially, we were in Damascus, Syria, when that country was... A place you just went to yeah um and we did like play during the day but it was all about like partying afterwards and having fun and you know <laughs> sightseeing and we were staying we were hosted by the home teams so we were staying with like kids who were living in damascus and yeah yeah wow yeah. so it sounds like this is actually exactly what happens at sports yeah. meets yeah yeah okay okay see i don't play sports so i didn't know any of this thank you for educating me <laughs> So yeah, the Sri Lankan players played drums and sang in their local languages. And also for some reason, there's a video of this. They sang a nearly unrecognizable rendition of Shaggy's Girl, You're My Angel. Yes. My darling That is so angel. early 2000s. I love awesome. it. It puts you right in smack in the middle of 2004. You feel it. Like you listen to that song and you're like, I know what happened then. So... In a couple days, it was match number two. On September 13th, 2004, clouds had covered the German town of Wittischlagen and showered it with gentle rain all morning. Auxiliary members from the Bavarian handball team headed over to the hotel where the 23-member strong Sri Lankan handball team was staying. They had agreed to have breakfast at 7 a.m. that morning together, so the German hosts waited outside the hotel, outside the room for a while. 7 a.m. came and went. They waited for another hour. 8 a.m. came and went. By 9 a.m., they were worried that something may have happened to the Sri Lankan team. They busted open the door to the large conference room where the team was put up. Mattresses lined up on the floor where they slept. They were all disheveled as if left in a hurry. All the suitcases were still there. Shoes, sports uniforms, and all kinds of sport gear were strewn about the room. Everything was there except the 23 men from the grand old isle of Sri Lanka. Where had the team disappeared to? What was the team mascot? I don't know. I'm on it. Worried that the men had probably gone out jogging in the woods and gotten lost, mm. the Bavarian host set out a search party to look for them. The Wittischlagen police were notified, as well as the Sri Lankan embassy in Germany. Then, someone took a closer look at the hotel room, and they found, scrawled on a piece of paper, a strange note patched together with misspelt words, which were straightforward, apologetic, grateful, and still somehow optimistic. It read, and I quote, For everyone, we want to say thank you. You are very friendly. We have decided to leave Germany and travel to France. We want to find better, further life. This is our own decision and we will take full responsibility and risk for our decision. You are all very friendly and nice to us. Please forgive us. We don't have any other way right now. We cannot go back to Sri Lanka. Please. Don't worry about us. We will be just fine. You have done a lot for us, and we thank you all again. With love, manager, name sign below. The entire convoy of 23 men had dispersed into Germany, and they couldn't be traced beyond the local train stations and cab stops. They had disappeared in search of a better life, 
to alleviate themselves from the poverty and civil war-ridden existence back home in Sri Lanka. This whole shenanigan was nothing but a ruse right from the start. So what do you think about that? It's one way to do it. When you say they couldn't be tracked past like the train stations, are you saying that like they were in fact like tracked to the train stations? Like there was video and stuff they saw all the people. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. The team had dispersed out of the hotel in pairs and threes and fours and just walked in several directions, not really talking to each other, just kind of getting away from there. And then it's a small town. If you look up Wittish Langan on YouTube, there are several videos of the town. It's a tiny, tiny town. There are hardly any buildings which are two stories even. You know, it's like a typical German or European type okay. small town. So they knew exactly where to go. So when I say they, I mean the team looking for the Sri Lankans. They went to the cab stops. They went to the train station, the bus stations, and they found traces that, yes, this is where they landed up because they wanted to get out from the town. So they traced them to all of those transport terminals. But let's rewind time and look at the events preceding this monumental trip and vanishing act. Now, this didn't occur in a vacuum. You don't just waltz into Europe from developing nations. Oh, no, no, no. This instance of illegal immigration was a carefully laid plan and took months to execute. The exchange program between the two countries was facilitated by an organization called the Asian German Sports Exchange Program or AGSEP. I'm going to call it AGSEP sure. for short. It was started by a German national called Dietmar Doring. He came to Sri Lanka in 1981. He fell in love and he never left. Since he was an avid table tennis player, he started this exchange program with his home country with the help of Sri Lanka's government to foster hundreds of friendly visits for various sports. So just like Alex said, teams would go to each other's countries, stay with host families and play friendly games. Never handball though. There just wasn't any interest in the sport in South Asia. In South Asia, it's all about cricket and soccer. Mm. So no one cared about handball in Sri Lanka. So they never had a team before. Out of the blue, in 2003, Doring received a call from the Sri Lankan Sports Ministry about inviting the German handball team over for a friendly match. Now, this was surprising because Doring had never even heard of a local handball team that played the sport. So... He's like, what? You want the Germans to come here and play with whom? There's no team. <laughs> the ministry appointed a head coach, Atula Vijayanayaka, who in a matter of weeks put together a ragtag group of men together as the official Sri Lankan handball team. Doring first had a tinge of suspicion when the men showed up for the official photo shoot wearing formal suits instead of their uniforms like every other sports team had done. That was when he was like, wait a minute, what are these even athletes? Because generally, when you take team pictures, you wear your colors. Or you wear your uniform, yeah. This was unusual, and it was almost as if these men had never played in a sports tournament before. <laughs> Vijanayaka, the new head coach, held practice sessions a couple times a week and taught the bare minimum basics of handball to the team. They were coached more on how to appear like they knew handball and posture as athletes who were learning and learning well. And it worked because the German team did come, and with much fanfare, an exhibition match was held. So let me send you some pictures of this exhibition team. All right. Do, 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 do. Yeah, recently a friend from back in my Qatar days sent me this a home video that's on YouTube and it's basically a collage of photos from the track and field meet that we did in Cairo and it's the most it's the most 2000s thing ever. There's a Nickelback song like oh, playing. Oh no. That one song. I don't even you know. Is it photographs? Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Aren't they all kind of, is, aren't all Nickelback songs the same song? Kind of, yeah. To me, it's it's all the same. Did you have like a raccoon eye, eyeliner all around your eyes? So most of the photos are like on the 
track and field, but then there's some of the like sightseeing photos and there must have been a formal dinner or something because we're all dressed in like sort of formal clothes and I was doing like the Green Day look. So I was wearing like a A black button up with a, I had a silver tie on and oh my God, just living my, my, my most emo self. Whoa. All right, so I'm looking at the photos. What are we looking for here? Because this just seems like two sports. vastly different cultures. Yeah, like doing sports. It looks exactly like how an exhibition match would look. They look really young. Is that just because they're brown? I mean, aren't most sports players kind of young? No, but the German team looks way older to me. They may have been older. We don't know. They may have been older. Because they had an established team. So maybe this was like their national team. You know, men may have been in their 30s and 40s. I just want to point out that like the Germans also definitely just look stoked. Like they're just like, ah, we're going to Sri Lanka. <laughs> like they look so excited to be playing with this team. But yet so serious in one of the photos because it is like a game to them. Like it is like a sport. So they're like, okay, we're going to play. And it's their sport. They made this. So they're so happy that a country is now adopting this sport, right? They're like, yes, yes. Handball. So far at this point in the story, I feel kind of bad for the Germans. <laughs> like yeah. I feel like they were so excited to host this team and then they ran away from them and they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's also just so German. They're like stoked to do the thing that they came here to do and then like, <laughs> actually there's a whole subplot happening <laughs> that they just never would have expected probably. These poor guys. They had no idea what was going on. Yeah. Yeah. So this game, the exhibition match that they played was also atrocious. The score of Sri Lankans versus Germans was 2 to 36. Holy shit. (laughs) 2 to 36. I don't even know how they made that 2 point. But it was atrocious. And they still managed to get an invite to Germany to play matches. That is what is customary in an exchange program. So they're like, you came here, so now we come to you. Yeah. <laughs> right? They can't just say, no, 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 don't come, don't come to Germany. In a way, they were now obligated to host them. So I just looked it up, though. It says that professional handball teams typically score between 20 and 35 goals each. Two. So they did really bad. Yeah. <laughs> Two. <laughs> it sounds like the Germans were just in it because it was cute. <laughs> yes. I think they were like, oh my God, another country wants to play our sport. Let's do everything in our capacity to make that happen. Which is kind of sweet. Like, that's kind of nice. Yeah, so sweet. It's really good intentions, it sounds like. <laughs> German spirit, right? Like, they're just really nice people. That's unfortunately what was taken advantage of Aww. in this situation. So... Encouraged by yet another prospect for intercontinental harmony, Dietmar Doring, the founder of AGCEP, committed himself to this cause and the resources of his organization, AGCEP, into getting this trip to Germany underway. The biggest hurdle in the process was, of course, getting visas for these men from the German embassy. Because like I mentioned before, a brown person doesn't simply walk into a non-brown country just for shits and giggles. Nope, that doesn't Mm. happen. There's a ton of paperwork, proof of income, references and vouchers for security that one has to provide along with a hefty fee just to apply. Chances of audits, further requests for information and outright rejections are very high. If you're a single woman in your early 20s or something, there is absolutely no way you will ever get tourist visa for the U.S. ever because they're afraid that you're just going to come here and get married to Mm. someone and stay. That's why you always see Indian tourists in the U.S. is like an entire bunch, like a bus full. They give family visas. Makes sense. But if you're a single woman, forget it. You can't visit as a tourist. That sucks. The stamp of approval and recommendation from a German national like Dietmar Doring And his highly successful AGCEP foundation was a huge boost of confidence in that visa application Mm -hmm. for 23 men. They were soon approved and the 2004 trip was planned to play 10 games over a period of two weeks in Wittischlager. And they only played one? 
They only played oh, one. Bums. <laughs> At least they played one. I mean, I wouldn't have even expected them to play one. That's what I was going to say. Like, I kind of thought they would just hit the airport and go. That was the original plan. But unfortunately for them, the German team had come there in uniform. You know, the whole team was there to pick them up and they Aww, couldn't. Oh, because they were so excited. <laughs> yes. So they couldn't just disperse from the airport. So they're like, fine. <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> 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 so these men not only bamboozled the Germans, but also the AGSEP Foundation and the German Embassy in Colombo. There were accusations and assumptions made about Dietmar Doring's involvement in this con, mm. but his impeccable reputation spoke for him, and his name was cleared soon. He suspects that the head coach was the mastermind behind the whole thing. However, if you think about it, there had to have been someone at the Sri Lankan sports ministry who either supported this plan or was hoodwinked themselves because the call to accept had come from the sports ministry, right? About this mm -hmm. new exchange program for handball. It's unlikely that these 23 men had the power or influence over ministers, but it's not entirely impossible. Sri Lanka is right below India on the Global Corruption Index charts at number 99 out of 195 countries. Who's number one? So it's possible. Who tracks number that? Number one is North Korea. Oh, no. That's not interesting. Who tracks the corruption rate and how? Um, I have no idea, but I saw the index. Yeah, that's my bigger, my bigger question. Who is making this index? And like, is their job just to go to each country and try and bribe people? Yeah, they're like, at every stage, starting from the airport, they're like, hey, psst, 50 bucks, get me to the front of the line. <laughs> and I like, That's who fun. can I bribe? <laughs> That's such a fun trip though, right? Go to each country and just bribe everyone. I would be awful at it. I would be so uncomfortable and just awful. Like, yeah. I, it's not something I could do. Yeah. I didn't have to do bribing much in India because I just, you know, I didn't really get into trouble much. So I didn't have to do it. Like bribing, haggling, any of it. I'm awful at like to the point where I was in Mexico once and I was in like this little street, like at this street market. And mm -hmm. I was like, how much is this dress? And the guy was like, oh, this many pesos. And I was like, OK. And I just handed him it. And he was like, N no, 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 no. Like then you say, yeah. And I was like, but you said it was this much. And he's like, right, yeah. but you're uh, like, he, this guy literally had to explain it to me. Then he felt so bad. He gave it to me half off. I was like, okay. Little did he know that that was your plan all along. Oh, that was my tactic. No. <laughs> like do the Puss in Boots thing. Oh, I'll give you whatever you want. A hundred dollars for this just hat. I didn't know. Anyway, so I'd be <laughs> awful at bribing people, but okay. So these guys came. The Germans picked them up in the airport. They played the first game. They left. So Fox News, of course, blew the news up on their outlets, calling the men terrorists. Of course. Who had infiltrated Europe through Germany. This was alluding to them as possibly being members of the LTTE group who were actively involved in the civil war that raged in Sri Lanka for nearly two decades. In reality, the handball team was made up of only three Tamils, a few Muslims, and the rest were all Sinhalese. Sinhalese people are the majority population in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. Tamils or Tamilians um, make up another part of it, and the civil war was between these two communities, trying to forge their own identity and, well, not request, but demand equal opportunity and to eradicate discrimination that was going on. Tons of war crimes and whatnot. I don't really want to get into it, but this team was made up of all diverse kind of men. It wasn't just made up of the ethnic group that was considered terrorists. Mm -hmm. This wasn't any kind of political plot at all. It was simply poverty and hardship that united the men beyond ethnic identities. Kind of sweet, isn't it? We're all poor. Doesn't matter where we come from. Doesn't matter which side we are on. But what was their plan? You know, like, okay, they're going to disperse across Europe and then they're not going to have any paperwork to get jobs. Like, it's not like, did they have a plan to then not live on the street or in poverty in other countries? Apparently some of them did. And I'll go through that in just a second. So just to give you a better understanding into why they did this, on average, each of those men had families of five up to 10 members. 
which they needed to support financially. None of them had jobs that would enable them to do that. If you're curious about the outcome of these men after that morning in 2004, let me tell you a little bit more about that. The initial investigation had shown that most of these men had crossed into Italy. Okay. Okay. They said they were going to France, but they ended up in Italy. (laughs) Classic misdirection. I'm going left, but I'm going right. Why Italy? Weather. I think the food's better too. I I could see the Italian food being more conducive to a South Asian palate than a French cuisine. At least they use a lot of garlic and cayenne and pepper, black pepper, tons of black pepper. I like the idea that food is why, is why they chose where to go. That they were like, we have better job prospects in France. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, food and weather. Do you want, do you want to eat cheese and bread? <laughs> or do you want to eat fish and garlic? And it's like, oh, okay, clearly Italy then, yeah. Italy, oh, of course. Like there is a huge Sri Lankan population in Italy, nearly 100,000 strong. Now, they mostly emigrated there in search for better paying jobs and better living conditions, mm-hmm. as most migrants do anywhere, mm-hmm. really. So nothing too extraordinary. A lot of the agricultural labor in Italy is South Asian. So Indians, Bangladeshis, Nepalis, Sri Lankans. And of course, there are cases of exploitation and unfair working conditions there as well. Just as you see in the U.S. with South American farm workers Mm -hmm. or Mexican farm workers who work in all the farms, like fruit farms, vegetable farms all over America, and then they're exploited. They're not paid a living wage. That's exactly how it is in Italy as well. Some of these men had relatives already living in Italy as part of that 100,000 group. So they just had to get there by hook or crook and they would be golden. They would be set up with whatever they needed to start a new job there. The typical route from Sri Lanka to Italy would involve being locked up in a container Mm. on merchant ships for weeks, hoping to stay alive by the time they get there. Because there have been cases of containers being opened and them finding like eight or ten people suffocated in there. Terrible. It's a perilous journey. Yeah, That's awful. Think about it. They're risking their lives to come to a different country, which means that To them, it's a life or death situation they're escaping Mm -hmm. from or leaving. Mm -hmm. It's not just because they're sneaky or, you know, they just want a different experience. No, it's a life or death situation. Yeah. So these guys, in comparison, the handball con was like a luxury, (laughs) deluxe, premium experience in the annals of illegal immigration, right? They really didn't have to go through any of that. They just got on a plane They made it to Germany. So melmagazine.com, which is my main source of information today, mentions that they tracked down some of the families of these men and surprisingly close to half of them had actually returned back to Sri Lanka but now had Italian visas and could easily go back when and if they chose to. There you go. Interesting. Yeah, these men revealed that they had paid around $4,000 to be part of this team. That is a huge, huge sum. The entire family must have contributed, yeah. Hustled and bustled and sold everything just to make this happen. That's how critical it was for them. And intriguing that none of these men were prosecuted. I don't know, maybe enough time had passed, no one cared. Maybe Sri Lankan government wanted to save face and hush it all up. Maybe they were just disorganized. <laughs> yeah. They didn't track them when they came back. Oh, you're the same guys from uh, 2004? You said yeah. they each paid 4000 US dollars? Yes. Okay, so right now, at today's current rate, 4000 mm. US dollars is 807,977 Sri Lankan rupees. That is so much. Yeah. That is a lot. Now, I don't know what the terms of agreement was. Was it the same amount for each and every man? Or if it was different, if they paid it all at once or paid in installments? It was a group installments. Thing, yeah. yeah, don't know. Don't know what the terms were. But it wasn't just a free ride. They definitely had to pay someone who made this all happen. It wasn't them who came up with this idea. They, they were just part of it. They're lucky they didn't like accidentally buy into like a squid game situation. There's my... 
very current reference of the day. <laughs> hmm. For all you know, that's based on true events. Because <laughs> anything can happen. Who knows, Alex, if there is a squid game going on somewhere. There was one uh, South Asian dude in that show, too. He was like, he got on the wrong team. Oh, that poor Pakistani yeah. guy. He was so nice. so nice. He was so nice. I need to watch that. Yeah, like, it's on my list. Okay. We'll say no more. I keep trying to get to it, and then I get distracted with work. In any case, this incident marred the relationship between the two countries as far as the AGCEP exchange program went. The organization was blacklisted by Germany. Oh, damn. No other teams were invited back to Germany after that, which sucks for all the other athletes who were actually genuinely playing. And, yeah. you know, these guys screwed it for everyone. Right. In 2010, Sri Lanka finally debuted an actual legit, officially stamped handball team <laughs> at the South Asian Games in Bangladesh. No news on whether they've, <laughs> they've ever played with the German team. I didn't look it up, but I imagine there'd be some sparks at that game. Oh, they'd be like, everyone must turn on their trackers right now. <laughs> Share team location. <laughs> yeah. Wherever they play the sport, all the doors locked. are like locked, padlocked. Yeah. There's chains. You want to go to the bathroom? Right here's a bucket. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> In 2008, so four years after the incident, a movie was made by an Italian director telling a slightly fictionalized version of this con. The movie is called Machan and is practically impossible to find with English subtitles <laughs> unless you buy the DVD. There is a version on YouTube. It has some kind of Scandinavian subtitle on it. I don't know what it is. I don't understand it. The movie itself is shot in Sinhalese, which is a local Sri Lankan language, so I wish I could find English subtitles. In a fantastic twist of the tale, life imitated art. When, after shooting of Machan wrapped up in Germany, one of the Sri Lankan actors failed to show up at the airport and disappeared into Europe himself, <laughs> just like the character. I wonder where he got the idea. <laughs> he was like, this is this is smart. Yeah, okay. This actually work? <laughs> How amazing is that? They let it happen twice. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, apparently that actor now lives in London and he's doing just fine. So This is like one of those things where suddenly, oh, if you're from Sri Lanka, you like can't do anything or go anywhere. And then you're like, what did someone do that made this rule? Like someone <laughs> yeah. messed it up for everyone else. And that's what this is. Like, alternatively, they should just maybe make it easier to get into the country by legal avenues so yeah. that there's less absconding. <laughs> yeah. Stuff like this keeps happening, and it's almost like making it worse. It's making it worse, because now I would be so confused as a German embassy official. Like, oh my god, who do I believe? Is everyone here lying? I don't know. Who do I trust? <sighs> well... That was our case for today. I'm calling this episode Slight of Hand Ball. <laughs> oh, very good. Very good. <laughs> okay, so let's have some parting thoughts on the case. Katie, go ahead. Uh, I'm with Alex. I think that it should be easier to travel between countries. And if it were, then maybe... This wouldn't have happened, but also that if there are countries with severe poverty, I think we're all a human race and we need to do something to help. Also, I feel bad for the Germans. Here, here. Alex, what do you think? Hmm. Maybe just like no more sports? Just kill all sports. Kill the sports. Uh, I will have to argue with that. <laughs> no, no. I, I like Just because, like, nice. kids need sports. Like, yeah. they teach them so many things. It's physical activity. It's like, yeah. Alex, do you even know what Katie does? I work for a sports association. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I like sports. Um, This was a different kind of sport. How dare you, Alex? They were playing a different game. We're mortal enemies now. Okay, so Alex, I want to hear your sports-related anecdotal story. Go ahead. I want to hear it now. I've already given a few. 
because I've never been good at sports. And when I would play overseas, I felt like the, I don't know, for me, the playing field was a little more even because maybe there wasn't such yeah. a hardcore sports culture and then whenever I'd come back to the U.S. for like a year when I moved back it was Mm -hmm. like oh my god why is everyone so strong (laughs) it was terrifying I can kind of imagine what it was like for the Sri Lankan team to encounter these like big beefy Germans Germans ready to play some handball and they take it so seriously because they're like this is a sport we're doing this the right way and they're like ah ha ha we're just gonna drink and dance and have fun and (laughs) Girl, you're my angel. You're my darling. You know, that's exactly what handball I respect is that. <laughs> yeah, so my sports um, experiences in life were just shitty. I hate organized sports. It was just never my thing. Um, so someone pushed me into the school basketball team when I was in high school. I hated it because it was at 5 a.m. And Ooh. as I've told you before. I am not a morning person, okay? I just can't function if I wake up at that time. And so every morning, I would have acidity. I'd be throwing up. I just Ugh. hated it. And so I cried and cried and cried and cried till the coach let me out of the team. Because they didn't even let me play. They just had me sit on the bench all the time. Whoa. If you're just going to have me wake up at 5 a.m. to sit on a bench all week, screw this shit. I'm out of here. <laughs> you know, you're not even letting me play. Go to hell. I don't want it. Yeah. So when we used to play with friends in the evening after school, I had I had a ball. We used to play soccer and I hate running. So I was like, I'll just be the goalkeeper. So I just have to stand here. Y'all do all your running around and stuff. And if the ball comes here, I'll catch it. And I used to wear these really heavy shoes. They were almost like army boots because it looked so cool. So cool. And so if anyone tried to come and make a goal, I would run forward and kick them in the shins. <laughs> I was a really, really successful goalkeeper. Excellent technique. Oh People were gosh. scared to make goals on my end. I'm pretty sure that's illegal, Pia. You can't. That is so illegal. <laughs> you can't do that. Oh my gosh. I didn't do it on purpose. Oh, right? okay. It all happened okay. as part of defending the goal. So, yeah, those are my sports experiences. What about you, Katie? Uh, so I actually, I played softball, I did track, and I did uh, swimming. Mm-hmm. One that really stands out, because I did a, I had like really high endurance. Yeah. I ran long distance, so I often did the mile, and uh, I used to get yelled at all the time, because in the first few laps around, I would be right next to the like person in like first or second place and I would literally just talk to them and just be like how's it going like oh do you like this area I don't really found this track I'm gonna go to Dairy Queen after like I would just like be talking and you would hear Mr. J yelling all the time Katie if you can talk you can run faster and it's like (laughs) okay (laughs) then it was like then I would take off um so that was that was good that like I could do that though up until like my junior senior year of high school then people were just those those kids were like we're getting track scholarships so like they were serious and they were they were they blew me out of the water so it's not that I was like really great at track it's just that right I had endurance for some reason probably because I do talk so much so I just didn't like when they treated me like shit and that was the problem they were treating me like shit and I was like no thanks especially at 5 a.m no thanks yeah so yeah well you know I have a kid now and let's see if she enjoys team sports. But so far I'm seeing, I'm not seeing any indication <laughs> that that she does. The funny thing is my husband and I were walking like every Saturday. We're trying to become regulars at this one donut place. Ooh, that is a sport. My kind of sport. Right. So every Saturday we have a plan. <laughs> we wake up in the morning. We walk down there. We have these little like relationship questions we ask each other. They're really fun. And then uh, we walk back. But there's this one house yesterday. We passed this house. And in the backyard, they have built a like a like a batting cage in their backyard. Oh. And we were like, oh, my God. At first, we were just like, that's so intense. And then we both sat there for a second. We were like, you know what, though? If we have children and they're ever into yeah. sports, I guarantee you we're going to be those people. We're going to be the ones <laughs> that like build a batting cage in the backyard because we're like all or nothing kind of people. Mm-hmm. So it's like I've taken up sewing again just because I like sewing. And my husband, no joke, is like, we need to buy a laser cutter. 
because he's like, if we buy a laser cutter, it can cut nice. the fabric and the pattern so we don't have to. And I'm like, oh, that's so smart. And it's like all yes. or nothing for everything. I always like sports for the shopping. <laughs> Shopping, yeah. shopping's involved in sports. You get to buy new shoes, and balls, and <laughs> socks, and stuff. I do work for a sports association. I'm just gonna say a lot of sports in the U.S. I don't know how it is in Sri Lanka or in India or anywhere else, but in the U.S., a lot of youth sports are pay to play, and a lot of children oh. do not get to the opportunity to play youth sports because of all those additional costs. So, like, they can't mm. afford the clothes, they can't afford the travel costs, they can't afford the equipment costs, and that is why one of the things we're working on right now is something called the FIT Act, which would allow people to use their HSAs and FSAs towards those expenses, um, mm -hmm. and it's, like, you know, it's a bipartisan piece of legislation, it's got some people behind it, but it's really important. In a country like America, I'm still amazed that you have to pay for these kind of activities for yeah, children. You have to pay for crazy. them to even play the sport. It's like that's why it's called pay to play. It's I I didn't have to pay to play the sport. That's why I got to buy cleats. Just so many yeah. cleats. Nice. You mean in Qatar? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Qatar. Way leagues leagues ahead of America mm -hmm. in terms of providing for children. Especially because since they look have at this. all these all these studies about how kids who play youth sports do better socially. They do uh statistically they tend to do because everyone has like the oh you know rocks for jocks like jocks are stupid but actually there are a lot of studies that show kids who play sports tend to do better uh in their academic studies as well because of the relationship yeah. between physical activity and brain synapses and stuff so yeah focusing being able to focus yeah. and dedicate time True. and you know to want something and go get it yeah. and of course there are jocks but maybe one in each team the 18 other people or 19 other people are not jocks right yeah, they're just in it for fun. And it's yeah. it's crazy how many kids don't get to play youth sports because of the cost associated with it. So do better, America. Come on. Yeah. I feel like the U.S. is quickly dropping on all accounts in terms of education. It's not even that high up anymore, is it? Never really was. Well, at least at least the NFL halftime shows are really fun. <laughs> <laughs> bringing it back yep all those commercials yep that is the most sporty thing i will probably watch in a year <laughs> half is show. the halftime show <laughs> at the nfl that's about it for our sporty but not really sporty episode today um and are you ready for a quick bollywood corner yes okay i didn't want to put in like hardcore sport uh, movies in there is one so my first recommendation is Dam Lagake Haisha which is a Bollywood movie it is such a sweet romantic movie about well <laughs> two characters who find love right at the end in an arranged marriage where there isn't any attraction from the get-go because it's arranged you know it's a cold business deal almost like here's our daughter here's our son get married what <laughs> They're not into it. They're just get married because they have to. Huh. But the story is endearing about how almost at the brink of separation, they learn to appreciate each other, love each other, and find out more about each other through the course of a contest in which teams of spouses must race to the finish line. The catch being the husband has to carry the wife on his back. Huh. So the lead character played by Bumi Pednekar is an overweight woman so it proves a challenge for the other lead character played by Ayushman Kurana who's really skinny so they have to kind of make it work she tries to lose weight and he tries to gain more muscle so they're kind of meeting in the middle where earlier they were totally diametrically opposite people so I love this movie it was really fun Cute. it was fun to watch take a look it is on Amazon Prime in the US it's called Dam Lagake Haisha yeah and if you watch it Share your thoughts on Instagram or whatever with the account. When I was watching this movie, I was looking at my husband like, can you pick me up? There's no way. I mean, did he immediately try? <laughs> yeah, he did. He can pick me up, sure. But I don't think we'd run a race. Forget winning it. There's just no way. <laughs> How long was this race? Like, were they running a mile? Like, where were they running? Probably like... Oh, my gosh. 
well, not a mile, maybe half a mile, but that's a lot. That is a lot. Kind of sounds like the husband has to do all the work. Like, does the, the wife get to do anything or you just have to sit there? I don't know. When was the last time you piggyback received a piggyback ride? Yeah. Like, when was the last time you jumped on someone's back and did a piggyback ride? <laughs> Cause like you gotta you gotta squeeze your legs, man. Like your That's legs That's true. Get tired. That's true. Yeah. Like you have to hold your own weight, and that's already something I can't do. But but still, exactly. Oh, I had a true. piggyback okay, ride okay. last week, and like uh, it's hard. You feel it. Okay. Next day. Okay. Okay. Alex, your homework. Go be like I'm jumping on your back, person. <laughs> I'm just gonna go jump on it next person i see alex you know that really buff hair trigger neighbor you have who keeps screaming at you oh yeah go jump on his back his girlfriend came over the other day jump on her back my boyfriend already told you to be quiet da, da, da. Oh, she's, we have an enemy she's the real ghost in the building be like i will i will be quiet if you can win a race carrying one back <laughs> There you go. They're French people. They're so small. Okay. Well, that was my first recommendation. My second one is a proper sporty movie. It's called Dungle. Yes! It is a super duper hit Bollywood movie about a father's relentless drive to make his daughters into wrestling champions because he himself, as a wrestling champion, had to kind of fade into the shadows Mm. at one time. But it's not an easy task because it's a women's team and there isn't too much support for that. What? I love this In general, in Indian rural societies. In the U.S. too. Like, that's not just an Indian thing. It would have been quite the twist if at the end the girls just absconded and disappeared with their gold medals or whatever medals. I don't know. Yeah, at least they won and then disappeared. (laughs) Yeah. They deserve it. That movie's awesome big fan yeah that movie is really amazing and there's so many like emotional heart touching moments you cannot watch this movie without shedding a tear that's my challenge yeah to anyone listening True. if you can watch dungle and not shed a single tear congratulations you're a sociopath <laughs> <laughs> proven confirmed you may soon be featured on our show <laughs> yes <laughs> because i remember alex came out of that movie like oh, yeah. with Tears yep. down her cheeks. She's like, that was such a good movie. Good time. Uh, Indian movies really get me, though. I mean, they're made to emotionally manipulate the viewer. <laughs> but so. they're so good at it. They are good at it. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, watch Dungle. I'm sure it's available somewhere to stream. Take a look. It's all about wrestling. It's Indian. Well, I don't think it's like traditional Indian wrestling because there is a different sport in India for the traditional Indian wrestling. But yeah, it's interesting because they they sort of train in the traditional indian way and then they have to like relearn once they realize oh they're actually like good at wrestling and they train in like a traditional like sand pit it's all very yes epic it kind of comes full circle yeah. right it's like the hero's journey yeah, yeah, almost yeah. heroine's journey yep watch dongle and that's it for my bollywood corner. what you're not gonna mention lagan Lagan? Okay, yes. Okay. I mean, I did look at Lagan. I was like, it's too old. I don't know if anyone even wants to watch Lagan anymore. This um, village in colonial times in India where the villagers have to play cricket against the Brits to wave off taxes for the year. Uh, that's high stakes, man. That is, yeah. So, yeah, it is, it is a very long movie. Isn't this the movie... That, like, that very well-known Bhangra song comes from. Which Bhangra song? Isn't it? The, like... That one. You know what I'm talking about. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds like every Bhangra song ever. I'm just glad you said that and not me, because I was just about to be like, that sounds like every time you do a Bollywood song, and, like... On this show, that's the sound you make. <laughs> what are you talking about? Na, 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 na. Oh, that one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really good at. I'm really good at recalling this song. <sighs> okay, okay, <laughs> girls. Before we sign off, I have a little audio visual treat. Ooh. Um, there is a video of that yes. one match that they played in Germany. Yes. Okay, let's watch it on Zoom so we can watch it together. You also have the video of them singing? 
Mm. Yeah, that's what mm. I really want to mm. see. <laughs> yes, yes. So they're singing Darling, You're My Angel right now, okay? It's their version of it, which is why it'll take you a few seconds to recognize it. I hear it. <laughs> I, yeah, instantly recognized. Amazing. <laughs> Chorus. Baby, dirty oh my angel, oh my you're my darling. Oh my god, they're so happy! Look at them! So happy. <laughs> oh, she's throwing it to you! Oh, Amazing. look at that hashtag symbol! I love it. In 2004, they, they were ahead so of their happy. time. Awesome. Like right but just look at them. You can't tell by looking at them that they're fooling everyone. They're just so happy to be here. Uh, I love them. Respect. I wonder how they felt about beer and brats. Oh, they must have loved it. <laughs> nice. I wish they'd panned the camera to the Germans on the side. <laughs> yeah, you see their reaction. So this is their room where they had stayed. They didn't even make their beds or anything. That's kind of rude. No, they just yeah, they, they, cleaned up they should have at least. Made I don't understand beds. why they didn't take their like luggage. Luggage, yeah. Yeah, they just left all their stuff lying around. And this is their note. Oh. I mean, they at least wrote a note. That was yeah. cute. That was so We're cute. okay. Don't worry about us. Like, aww. Und dann starten dein. This is their game. And this is the match. Yes. They're singing their national anthem. They're shaking hands. And <laughs> they're so small compared to the German team. <laughs> <laughs> Shorties. Yeah, they're exchanging t-shirts. And look how happy that German guy looks. He looks so happy. This is sad. I'm so sad for them. This is them pretending to play a match of a sport that they clearly don't know a thing about. <laughs> and I'm sure the German guys were already going easy on them. Oh, I doubt it. No. Yeah. Yeah, the German version of going easy on them was letting them get two points out of their yeah. 26 or 32 or whatever it was. The goalkeeper must have been done a self goal like here. Yeah. You oh, get one. No. <laughs> the Daria move. Oh, put your hands up after. <laughs> they're cheering their team on as if it's going to make any difference. Oh, they're laughing like they, they know. <laughs> they're they know. Like, they're like, hey, tomorrow we'll be gone. Tomorrow we'll be in Italy. Eating pizza. To be honest, the sport is kind of dumb. I mean, it is essentially, it does just look like they're playing like basketball. Yeah. Just poorly, yeah. Yeah, it's just weird basketball. That's probably because they don't know what they're doing. I mean, when they're two teams who know what they're doing, it probably looks really interesting. As soon as you dribble, you have to stop, but you can take like two steps. It's just like rules for no reason, and I don't know. Yeah. That one guy, the Sri Lankan guy who was trying to score a goal, and he failed, he's like, oh no! <laughs> As if he gives a shit. He's like, oh no, I could have done it. Man. End of the game. Hey! We don't have to crazy. do this anymore. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll be gone. I'm like, yay, it's over. <laughs> That was the totally fake match. We should totally start doing a sports commentating podcast. We're so good at it. <laughs> we just we'd be so good at so it. Good. We just know all the sports stuff. I'll just be singing Shaggy's You're My Angel throughout the whole thing. <laughs> it seems apt. It's a very sporty song. Like you think sports? You think that's the first Shaggy, thing. yeah. Shaggy. Mm. Yeah. All right, I guess. That's about all we have time for today. What did we learn today? Uh, we need easier immigration policies. Mm-hmm. Done. <laughs> Done. I'm glad you're going to make it happen. I, I appreciate that. I'm going to yeah. make it happen. <laughs> yep. <Yeah>. Alex? <laughs> what did we learn today? We learned that Shaggy has the best sports soundtrack of all time. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, you gotta follow the stuff. And um, thanks to our two Patreon people. <laughs> you guys have Patreons? We've oh, got so two. Exciting. Who are they? Yeah, you have to thank them. Who are they? Oh, th- anonymously. <gasps> yes. Thank you to our two yes. anonymous oh, Patreons. Oh, I love it. How do you, where do people find your Patreon? Because you gotta be like, find us on Patreon at... I don't know. Crimes from the East. <laughs> Oh my god. Don't go pay someone else. You like us, you pay us. <laughs> yeah. Pay us. Pay us copy. <laughs> Guys, I'm gonna give you the outline right now. Follow us on Instagram at Cries from the East. Oh yeah. You can follow me at other Alex B. Um and I cook food. That's mostly what it is. And subscribe and like them on Patreon at Cries from the East. And subscribe. What do they get if they subscribe? To, they become a Patreon. Snakes. You get snakes. You're going to send them snakes. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Snakes. <laughs> goats. I'm adding oh handball God. to the care package. I'm adding a handball. Uh, let's just call it an absconding kit. Oh, Absconction care kit. <laughs> We're going to add everything that you would need to commit the crimes that we cover. I love it. <laughs> I love it. A little bottle of cyanide. <laughs> Where do you get cyanide? Apparently everywhere. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Goldsmiths. That's where you get cyanide. I love it. (laughs) Okay. So with that thought, let's bid everyone adieu. See you all in a couple of weeks on another episode of Crimes from the East, your Daisy True Crime podcast with a little masala and spice. Spicy spice. All right. Yum.